So today we're diving into the differences between the project database, the project file, and the project archive. How they are different from one another and how you use them. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Explore a wide selection of pre-made creative tools for DaVinci Resolve, like titles, transitions, slideshows and infographs, like bar charts and callouts, and much, much more. Link in the description for more information. So first starting up DaVinci Resolve, you'll probably see a screen like this. And this is going to typically be where your local database is going to be. And you're not gonna have any idea where that file is unless you remember exactly where you selected to have it stored. This is going to be all of our edit information, but none of the media that is a part of those edits. So all of your video files, all of your images, all of your audio, none of that is going to be stored in, in the project database. The pros to this is it's much quicker. And this also works with a system that allows you to also do a network database as well. I'll dive into that in a second here. So a project database is a little bit different than a project file because a project file is going to be one particular instance of that project, but the project database can store a lot of other parameters and tie them all together. Like I was saying, all of the different projects, you can have your different project folders, and you can also, if I click here, you can also have project backups. And I kind of talked about this, about backing up files. Uh, project backups, pretty much what it is, is it allows you to have a uh, version control for your files if you have like an auto backup system enabled. DaVinci Resolve has this, um, and pretty much when you click on a uh, on a, a project and we take a look at the, uh, the project backups, we can see when backups were and when they were modified and then it was an auto backup and stuff like that. And you can always restore back to those. So that's kind of like your version control, right? So if you deleted something, you, you got out and you went back in and it wasn't there, you could go back to one of those uh, versions. Uh, I talk about that more in, a, in, a, in another video. And then you can also have different databases as well. So if we click this little button over here, we can have multiple different databases. Now we have disk databases and we have Postgres databases. Uh, one second on the differences between those two. One thing that I did wanna show is let's say all of our local databases, this one here has this little wheel. You, you will see this anytime you do big updates and they change a different parameter within the database. They add a new table, they add a new field, whatever it may be. Uh, they require you to do what's referred to as an upgrade database, right? So down here, the upgrade database, and that is going to add whatever that new metric is in the database, and it makes it irreversible, that particular database. So I'm currently using DaVinci Resolve 17. As you can see down here, this, is, this database is for DaVinci Resolve 16. So one of the things to keep in mind here is that when I update or, or upgrade, I can't go back. So let's say DaVinci Resolve 17 wasn't running very well on my system and I wanted to go back to DaVinci Resolve 16. Just hitting that button, I cannot go back with this particular database and all of the projects that are in it. So before you ever click this button, you wanna do a, pro a, a database uh, backup. And to do that, we're going to come right up to here. We'll click this button and it'll ask us our location and where we wanna store a backup of the database. This isn't going to be a live database, it'll be a separate file wherever you put it. And so if something happens and you go back to, to 16, I can grab whatever, wherever that file is and come over here, click this button. This is going to then restore from that file back to the way it was before I did the upgrade. Hopefully you're following there so then we can use all of the previous projects that we have in our database, even though we upgraded it uh, and so on. So just a way to, to save a database. You can also do backups if you ever want to store all of your, your database and put it on like a backup server or something of that nature in case you feel that the current hard drive that this database is stored on could potentially die. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So what is the difference between a disk database and a Postgres database? Primarily, one is on the network and one is on your specific computer. It being on the network has a couple of pros to it. If your system dies, that database doesn't die. That's one thing. 
Um, with Postgres, there's a lot of other services that you can run alongside of it to save the database in other locations. So you don't have to be concerned about losing edits and stuff like that. The other thing, and this is new, that will be in 17 for everyone that is interested in this, is DaVinci Resolve always had the ability to do like a collaborative edit. So you could have multiple editors working on the same project at the same time. Before this was only a studio only element of DaVinci Resolve, but now they're including it into DaVinci Resolve 17 for the non-studio version. And the reason that they said that they were doing this is because everyone is currently working at home. This allows remote editors a whole new ability to, if you don't have the studio version to now use uh, this one studio feature. So that is a cool thing. If you are looking into Postgres and you do any searching, you're going to see super comp complicated uh, ways to uh, set up a Postgres server. What I would recommend if you're not that tech savvy or you don't feel comfortable diving into doing that, you can get different services that uh, will automatically run you through like a wizard or if you have something like a Synology, I believe that they have it, maybe QNAP has it as well, uh, within their login, uh, there is typically a little wizard that you can click next, 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 you know, make a username next, 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 and it gives you an IP address to connect. So you have that uh, option as well. So that's pretty much what Databases are one centralized location for all of your edits. It also holds a lot of other information about those edits when it comes to version control with the backups, but it does not contain any of your media that the project is using. It only has the location. So if you go into your media pool, you right click and you look at the information and it says that it's stored on your main hard drive and it's in this folder, that folder, that's the only information that the database will have. Uh, it won't have the actual video clip itself. So um, that's another thing to keep in mind. Going from that into project files. Now project files are similar in nature because they don't have any of the media attached to them. They only have the location of that information. So to, to make a project file, we just simply go into uh, one of our databases, we right click, and then we go export project, right? And that's going to give us a that DRP, I believe, DaVinci Resolve, yeah, DRP, DaVinci Resolve project. It's gonna give us a file and then we can do whatever we want with that file. It's not going, it's only going to have the information of where the media is stored. That is all of your video, image, video images and audio. It's not going to contain any of the uh, media. It's only gonna contain its location. So if you were to put it on someone else's computer, they have to have the same locations or they have to relink things because when they start up DaVinci Resolve and they, they use that uh, the, uh, project file, it's going to say that the media is offline. So you just have to relink it to wherever it is on their system. And that's pretty much a project file in a nutshell. Once they get it, they go into their database and obviously they go import project. Once they're in the project, then they can relink everything. Going off to the next one, which is a project archive. Now a project archive, like a project, the only difference is now we're bringing all of the media with. The cool thing about this is, let's say you're working on a big project that has um, a, a TV show, and we're on season one, episode one, and location one. Inside location one, you have camera one, camera two, camera three, and we have take one, two, three, four, five, whatever it may be. All of the structure that you had set up for that project will all be saved when you bring the, when you uh, create a project archive. So clicking create project archive, what it's going to do is it's going to make a folder with a DaVinci Resolve project and all of your media. The difference between that project file that's in there and the project file, if you go export project file, is the project file inside an archive is going to link inside the archive. A project file might say something like this, as where a project archive is going to say something like this. And now if we bring it in using uh, restore project archive, all of the media is going to be linked. Now this is media that we used 
as well as media we didn't use. Anything that is inside the media pool, it's going to bring with it. So that's something, food for thought. If you're doing a project archive, you're going to store it, and it's not going to someone else, but you're saving it, uh, there might be uh, you know, information in there that you really don't need to have like a whole music library in there. You really didn't. You could just... Uh, there, there's ways to filter out this, the, the media you used versus the media you didn't use and remove all of that before you make your project archive. So you're not backing up all of that use, you know, stuff that you really didn't need. So that's something else to keep in mind. The only other thing that I can say about a project archive in its current state, if you were in Div, uh, Fusion and you use a loader node, the information inside the loader node is just going to be a location of the media the same way it would be in a in any other thing it is not going to bring that media with in its current state of davinci resolve that's how it's set up it does not bring that uh, I, a lot of people don't use loaders that are you know working inside davinci resolve that's typically something fusion users will use but that's something to Keep in mind currently, if you have a loader inside of Fusion, it will not bring that media because it's not in the media pool and it doesn't have a resolve ID. That's kind of getting maybe a little off topic, but that is it's just going to have the location of its current, like where it's currently uh, looks like in the project. So if it says that it goes to Joe Schmo folder, um, when you uh, load up the project archive, it's just gonna say Joe Schmo folder, but if you don't have the connection to that folder, you're not going to also bring that media with. So that's just something else to, to keep in mind there. Uh, and I think that kind of covers everything with the differences between the three, but um, hopefully that helped. Uh, yeah, I don't think I missed anything. And so with that being said, I hope that answered a lot of your questions for those that watched the video because they had a question on this. And for those that are just randomly watching it, hopefully you learned something. Uh, but with that being said, my name's JR. Stay safe. Have a good one, guys.